For economists and political scientists, the Philippines is considered as one of the newly industrialized countries. Investopedia defines NIC as is part of a socio-economic class that has recently made advances in industrialization. Greater economic stability within the nation accompanies this economic shift, although this process of stabilization may be incomplete or in a stage of infancy. To simply put it, the Philippine economy is performing better than her counterpart in the category developing countries. Together with the neighboring Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia, these NICs have their own problems and issues that need to be dealt with. This range from prostitution, gender inequality, racial and religious discrimination, terrorism, and of course, poverty. Social problems and issues are a universal phenomenon. Even our fellow Asian countries, considered as highly developed, like Singapore and Japan, are finding solutions to their own problems and issues that are similar, related, or entirely different to ours. Some of these are political, like graft and corruption, or economic, like the aging population and low birth rates. The latter is also considered socio-cultural. This photograph symbolizes the multifaceted issue called globalization. An economic issue like globalization is multifaceted and has caused polarizing effects to the various sectors of the Philippines. In the business sector alone, large-scale manufacturers are in favor of it because they can import cheap raw materials that are not available in the country. The micro-industries seem unaffected. The shipbuilding industry of the Philippines, a major sector of the economy, is GVC, which stands for Global Value Chains Ang GVC ay isang uri ng produksyon kung saan ay ang mga bahagi ng produkto ay mula sa iba't ibang panig ng daigdig. At ang pagsasaayos at pagbuo ng mga ito ay maaaring sa isa o higit pang bansa mangyari. At the end of the day, it is the Filipino consumers that decide which product to buy. Is it the good produced by the blood and sweat of a local Filipino producer or an imported product from, let's say, China, which has an attractive price and is imported by a big company? Ating suriin ang globalisasyon sa bansang India, isa sa pinakamalaking ekonomiya sa mundo. Isa din ito sa may pinakamagandang performance sa loob ng de dekadang ito. Sa kabila nito, ang India ay pang isandaan at tatlong siyam kung ang basihan ay ang real GDP per capita dahil ito sa napakalaking populasyon ng may hirap sa bansang ito. 
Pag-aralan ang dalawang ilustrasyon upang malaman ang kanais-nais at hindi kanais-nais na epekto ng globalisasyon at pakikipagkalakalan sa Europa at China. Tulad ng Pilipinas, ang India ay isa sa pinakamagaling na bansa na itinuturing na katangi-tangi sa business process outsourcing. From being an economic problem, globalization has become a multifaceted issue. Since globalization refers to the global village, countries and their government get entangled in this issue. One example is the Brexit, ang pag-alis ng United Kingdom sa European Union. Nagsimula ang proseso sa isang referendum noong taong 2016 sa pamumuno ni Prime Minister Theresa May. At ngayong taong 2020, opisyal na hindi na bahagi ng European Union ang United Kingdom. Sa dalawang taong proseso na tinatawag ng mga scholar na Brexit, lumobo ang bilang ng mga nawalan ng trabaho dahil sa pagsasarahan ng mga kumpanya. Dahil dito, pinalitan si Prime Minister Theresa May ni Boris Johnson. May mga naganap ding political riots at asasinasyon ng mga politiko. Mismo ang apat na bansang bumubuo sa United Kingdom ay hati sa kanilang pananaw. Nagpahayag ang Scotland sa pagnanais itong manatili sa European Union. There is no denying how powerful MNCs and TNCs in the world economy are. The richest countries with the biggest economies all have TNCs operating all over the world. These are in the sectors of pharmaceutical, automotive, information and technology, food and beverages, bank and financial services, and energy. These multi-billion dollar industries cause harm to their host countries in the sense that their citizens lose jobs that are being outsourced to developing countries due to cheap operational and production cost. Ayon naman kay ginoong Ronaldo Mactal, maraming negatibong epekto ang MNCs at TNCs sa host countries nito. Isa na dito ay ang This film, directed by the talented filmmakers, is a true evidence that Filipinos have what it takes to compete globally. This film was not shown at the movie theater, but it made a big noise in the international scene because of its story, cinematic techniques, and most importantly, the social relevance. What a global flick! This movie has been an official selection in many international festivals. Sa kabilang banda, ang pelikulang ito ay tumatalakay sa isang mukha ng globalisasyon. Ito ay ang mababang pagtingin ng lipunan sa mga hype beast ng Pilipinas. Ang terminong hype beast ay tumutukoy sa isang individual na nakaugaliang mangolekta ng mga tanyag na kasuotan, sapatos at iba pang aksesorya. Kasama diyan ang mga limited edition. When this trend reached the Philippine shores, Filipinos from well-off families were quick to join the bandwagon. 
However, those who are deprived of the resources resorted to buying and wearing fake items because that is what they can afford. Due to this, they get mocked and frowned upon in our society. You can also see some posts on social media branding them as juvenile criminals. You see, the movie How the Beast Got Hyped is not just a global film piece because of its caliber. Its plot also tackles global issues related to the economy and the society. Nowadays, we often encounter a group of kids or teenagers dressed in the most current street style trends. They often gather around in malls, parks, and parking areas to mingle with people or friends who share the same interest in fashion. How the beasts got hyped. There are various conflicting opinions on whether globalization and transnational terrorism are directly connected to one another. According to Helena Norberg Hodge in her essay entitled Globalization and Terror, Furthermore, she claims that to really understand the rise of religious fundamentalism and ethnic conflict, we need to look at the deep impacts of the global consumer culture on living cultures throughout the planet. Doing so allows us not only to better understand ISIS and similar groups, but also to see a way forward that lessens violence on all sides. Sadly, the world is facing a catastrophe of a global scale, a health problem from one country that has turned into a global pandemic because of globalization. The idea of global citizens living in a global village is now shattered. Countries, regardless of their economic status, have shut down their borders and severed ties with other nations. Racism and other forms of discrimination have become widespread. With the G7 nations entering into a recession, this economic problem will reach other regions as well. Political, economic, and socio-cultural effects will be felt all over the world, all because of a flu. The terms problem and issue are heavily intertwined. A stressful or harmful problem is a situation that needs to be addressed and be solved. If not, it can lead to series of problems. Like a problem, an issue is challenging. According to the book Contemporary Issues by Miss Sarenas, an issue greatly affects a huge part of the population or the humanity, while the problem may only affect an individual or a certain population. With this, an issue is interdisciplinary. An issue does not necessarily become a problem or is always negative. 